Hey guys, welcome back to another Foundry review. We're starting a new series today. We got the boys, JB, we got Sly, and we're doing Andor. Are you guys ready to talk about the show? Woohoo! I'm Woo. excited! Yeah, new yeah. Star Wars, baby! Yeah, Episode so one. There's, I, I don't know much about this, and I don't know where they're going, so I'm, I'm interested to hear you guys' thoughts. I'm, I'm actually very interested. This uh, Because we've done a lot of shows, and this one's... Quite a bit different. I feel like it's some of the other ones. relying on a lot of original source material, and they had might have a lot more creativity. From what I know and can tell from like movies and shit, it seems like they're relying on more original source material and ideas, and might have some extra room to be creative and shit, and tell True. original story without being You're like not going off a comic book or something. <laughs> yeah, as as uh, Cassian Andor is a character from Rogue One. Do you guys like him or no? Rogue One. Yes. yes. Here? No. <laughs> I'm actually the opposite. I kind I kind of was like in Rogue One, he's kind of a fucking asshole. That's his <laughs> point. Which is why here I'm like, okay, either either just keep him being like a manipulative piece of shit or just just don't. Don't well, give me some Red Dead Redemption story arc just to undo it again in a movie that technically, you know, came out beforehand, but it's after the fact. <laughs> well, that's all what Star Wars we've been viewing for a while now. I mean, like, it would make sense to, like, maybe that we're going to find out why he turned into such a manipulative person with, like, Rogue One being that at would such sense. high stakes as well. And we're going to see the character develop into how he is in Rogue One. So, I mean, it makes sense. I mean, like, same thing with, like, Boba Fett. Like, he had character development. He's not, like, a cold-blooded killer that we saw in the original right. trilogy, like, in Book of Boba. So you just kind of... Maybe try to keep that in mind, but I'm just assuming. Yeah, <laughs> I'm it just is, assuming. It is interesting though that you say that because I I also have I had initial thoughts of just like, well, maybe I went into this with the slight advantage because I went into this with zero expectations. Yeah, same here. I didn't really care too much about Rogue One to be honest. It was a fine movie. It was okay, but it was just like okay, this is a decent enough movie. So for this being about a character from that movie, I'm like. I honestly don't really care too much either way about this, so I'm just going into this completely blank slate. No real ideas of what this is going to be about because it is all like original shit. So I was like, okay, let's just watch it and see what happens. Hopefully it's good. And, you know, so far for me, I have generally positive feelings about the show. Um, but yeah, yeah I guess yeah, let's, me too. let's I talk about different pieces of, <laughs> I think, different uh, pieces of it. Just the very beginning was very eerie and like the atmospheric, like felt like Blade Runner 2047, like of LA and stuff. And yeah, it was, it just felt like that very, brothel, the yeah, red light district type of exactly, feel. Exactly. Like late at night with the rain and stuff. Like it was just a super Blade Runner, Blade Runner town. And it just kind of felt like on the outskirts late at night. And they talked about like workers from because of it being like an employee town or a corporate town or something like that. Yeah. You know, that's that's kind of what you expect like, in the future, like having colonies and company owned towns and kind of thing like that. Like a planet or system is going to thrive because the company has has people working there. And we've seen that in some other Star Wars media, especially that uh, Obi-Wan episode of Zach Braff uh, being the Imperial supporter in his truck and shit. <laughs> um, no, I, I I thought the beginning was like really swell. I was like really interested in it. With that, it. yeah, agreed. That was where the episode had the strongest bit. It was really pretty. Intro. It was really pretty. I like. I just liked the lighting on the planet and just like that that big long like uh, that kind of walkway. You know, with the rain. God, it was it was really gorgeous. Really gorgeous. I felt like this is pretty cinematography, man. It's it pretty good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I was a fan of that. It gave, uh, well, it gave a couple different vibes. Like that long walkway you're talking about, for some reason, reminded me of that, like, that one scene in Han Solo where he's driving that car along, like, what also seemed like yeah. a very long, you know, random bridge type thing. Um, and then the, the cantina bar thing also gave me, it, it, it reminded me of, like, the one on Tatooine way back when. Um, so that also seemed like cool because it was like somewhat consistent, but it was it, it, it was own, it was its own thing still. But it, it still felt like it was in the same universe still, you know. Um, yeah, which it just feels weird. Everyone's been like, "Oh yeah, it's gonna be it's gonna be this, but it's gonna be gritty." And I'm like, "Oh boy!" And like I remember Rogue One, like going to that, like, "Oh, it's gonna be gritty." And this actually feels definitely more dark toned and definitely like the beginning felt gritty and then 
a little bit like towards like later felt a little bit more light and i'm like oh we get more kind of the same old desert town kind of feeling uh people doing junker stuff and scrapping to get by yeah that's you know true. more of the same kind of star wars <laughs> Yeah, which I was like, okay, but like, it's it's nice to see like a different point of view of a different character, someone who's not a Jedi, someone who's not a bounty hunter, someone who's not a crime lord. You know, I'm yeah, like, this is dude. yeah, he's just a dude, a smuggler. You know, that's the impression you're we get. Like, he's just kind of like doing the shady shit and he's doing smuggling stuff. And I've always said like, hey, there's like endless possibilities for Star Wars and Star Wars stories to tell. And I'm glad we kind of get see get to see some smuggler stuff because I think it can be interesting. Wait, I don't. Was was Andor a smuggler? I thought he was an assassin, dude. No, he, I mean he. I said like smuggler vibes. I don't. I'm not saying oh, he's okay. actually smuggling anything. And that like literally in the episode, he's trying to smuggle items out. Yeah. He's trying to sell an I, item. I know that. Yeah. So he's. Yeah. Yeah. He's that's smuggling. He's smuggling an item. I think he's just trying to make money whatever way he can. Yeah. I actually don't know what, what he I does think. on a day to day. That's mm -hmm. a good point. No, I, I just I like it though because it's it's uh, something we haven't seen like a lot of in the big screen. Like the whole I guess centerpiece is like, oh, it's gonna be the birth of the republic, but like I don't really know that yet and I'm sure we'll get there, but I'm perfectly fine with him taking it slow and, and just exploring his character and the world around him because I, I really like it so far. It's a little uh, obscure to me so i like it yeah they're trying to give him a reason to actually want to fight back you know mm -hmm. they're setting up his like backstory so that it, it makes sense it's not just some guy comes up and is like you should fight for this rebellion but like now it's like he should fight for this rebellion because of all the shit that's going on that kind of thing yeah um so he's looking for a sister, which I don't think she was. I don't. I haven't seen Rogue One since it came out, so I don't know if she's ever been mentioned before. Nope. Um, yeah, no, yeah. I don't think so. Yeah, but that's that's like the first thing that he's looking for a sister, and he's kind of doing some shady stuff, and he's got connections in this town and everything. And there is a big like accident that happens with those two guards, which I thought was like really good and dramatic as fuck, and felt like it was. It was, like, the first time I've seen consequences yes. in Star Wars in, like, years. And I was like, this is fucking cool. It's yeah. Like, it felt yeah. like an actual, like, kind of a drama. And I'm like, oh, he's fucked. I mean, like, if people find out, like, he's fucked. And that guy fell and saw that he was dead. And that one guard, like, saw like saw that he, like, knew that he was next. He was like, he was like no, no, man, it's good. Like, I'm on your side. Like, we can we can lie and say he fell and shit. Going. Like, making script yeah. and shit. And he's just looking at him like, dude, the audacity of this guy. Like, yeah. I'm going to kill him. Yeah, just the look on their faces of just desperation on Andor and the guard. Because they both knew what was happening next, but they didn't want to go there. It was Yeah, that was the first ten minutes, too. I know. So it that was, like quite a way to start the show yeah i thought it was like the best scene i thought like the beginning was the best for sure i agree yeah, yeah. that's been the strongest so far in this episode and uh th so with the the kind of whole corporation stuff it definitely feels like groundwork to like imperial stuff that's what it feels like what like. they're what everyone's doing in the town you mean uh yeah like the officers in the blue when when the one head officer is like oh we got to cover it up and stuff. Oh yeah, I think. Yeah, it, it's an interesting relationship because he's like, the less we have to report, the more the Imperials don't bother to ask questions, type of thing. Yeah, like and a so subdivision. Like, Let's just like sweep this kind of shit under the rug. You know, it's just an accident. You know, you know they got in a tussle with the wrong kind of guy, and you know, leave it at that. Like, but the other guy's like, no, we gotta find this guy. We gotta go by the book. You know, the it rules say we gotta parallels. do this. I like seeing the bureaucratic stuff as well with it. What do you mean, Sly? Um, I, I, I see like a little bit of parallels between like how the two like douchebags that Andor kills, like how he's trying to like walk him through the script. He's like, yeah, we had a little misunderstanding. My dude take, took a fell, nobody's fault, blah, blah, blah. And then the bureaucrat trying to explain to that one like class nerd that's the one that says like, oh, didn't we have homework? And he's yeah. like, but Sire, isn't it regulation? And he's That's like, funny. he like made up like a full on script, dude. Yeah, on the spot. Yeah. And he's like, on the spot. He's, he's like, like, this ain't my first rodeo. I've buried tons of your coworkers, man. Yeah. <laughs> he's like, first yeah, off, actually. they weren't supposed to be in the strip club. Second off, they were supposed to be drinking. Third off, there is like a name a bunch of reasons that's going to get them more in trouble and that's going to just uncover more shit. And he's like, listen, he's like, this is better for business if we do it this way, bud. He's like, there's a reason I'm in fucking charge. And. It, it's kind of laughable too. Again, I get some Kylo Ren vibes where he's like, 
very like he tries really hard and has like none of his coworkers and like peers respect him. Respect or, him. Yeah. <laughs> he's like, yeah. we gotta solve it, you guys. Like stomps like really hard. It's like yeah. we gotta solve a murder and stuff. Yeah. And a lot of the tech as well, like in that base, like I, I get that old school feel, like you know that that old school fucking like technology from back in the day, that old school yeah. Star Wars original trilogy, man, it's so good, man, it's such mm-hmm. a good feeling. Mm-hmm. I love that aesthetic, it's so fucking cool. Yeah, yeah, they definitely, they definitely made it feel like it's part of that same time period, which I think is it is ha- helps a lot. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah, yeah, exactly. Five years no, before it. Battle of Yavin, boys. Yeah. yeah, we're right there. <laughs> this isn't a prequel product. I'm, uh, <laughs> I'm liking it. I'm, I'm, I'm just really liking it. There was just a lot of stuff going on in town, like the weather girl that maybe is a smuggler, maybe is it not? I don't know that he That's knew that girl. In yeah, with connection, she was doing some stuff. And man, the accents in this though, top notch, lovely. Love the characters with accents. It's like it's really good. It just makes me like keeps my attention a little bit more. A lot of the characters, like some of the guards, even like the big bureaucratic douchebag you mentioned, who like was in charge, was like, listen, here's what mm-hmm. you can do. Like he had a great voice. Like everyone, like just had. Gr- it was really well acted too. I didn't feel like at any point I'm like, oh, this feels cheap or cheesy or like bad or anything. I feel like they had some points where it felt like a little low and I mean not boring, but kind of dull. To where like this is necessary because just set up like what's gonna happen next to yeah. make you care about this person or show that this person cares about this person or why he does, you know? Um, but it was kind of cool because, mm-hmm. like, Andor was, like, moving on. He was trying to move quick and trying to cover up his tracks because at the very beginning of the episode, he murdered two guards, you know, from whatever corporate company town thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and people are fairly quick to, like, get on board and, like, help him out because, like the one dude that he first talks to is like so you know here's the story i went to your house or whatever you know that whole thing with like mm-hmm. that they made up another story on the spot i'm like damn okay these guys got each other's back that's kind of cool like, dude every character in the show so far can be like bullshit times 100 like, <laughs> yeah yeah we are they, dealing they with rolling those nat 20s on uh... yeah, we're dealing with all <laughs> shitty people all these are shitty untrustworthy people but it's okay um <laughs> I did get names. I, I, oh, sorry. Go ahead, Ken. I was going to say that I, I do agree with Sly a little bit on the where it started to lose me a little bit. Because um, uh, they started to introduce a few too many characters in the town, I thought, in this first episode. Because uh, you meet this this new chick in the junkyard. You meet that the guy that's also there that they seem to have a little thing going on uh, between her and the guy like running the shop that it, or whatever it seems like. Um, and you get the, the other character that he talks to when he first, like, joins. Mm-hmm. Or when he first, like, comes into town and everything. And the new uh, droid that he has, which I thought is actually kind of a cool new design for a droid. Oh, and yeah. there's there's just a little bit too many characters, I think. Uh, so it def- definitely started to lose me a little bit after the, the kind of the first half. Yeah. Um, I, w- I was surprised. still kind of interesting so far. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I'm definitely interested. I want to see more. They showed a lot of good Star Wars bits, um, kind of with a different... They showed it, but with I feel like in a different light as well. So I was like, this is awesome. I was really into it. Um, the first three episodes are out, but we only I've only seen the first one. But uh, I'm I'm more positive on it. Yeah. No, I'm 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 ready for for more. Um, so just based on the first episode, like. I mean, if, if it's nicer that it's a, a bit of a longer episode, so you get a better feel for the show in just one episode. So we can, you kind of have a decent idea of the the tone of the show. Mm, for sure. So it's, it, it's definitely more grounded, more um, like, it's not like epic space battles and crazy, you know, Jedi kind of powers and, s- and that kind of stuff. Space more fantasy. More espionage, yeah. smuggling, you know, just normal people type of stuff. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so yeah, I'm I'm a fan so far. Any other any other things we should mention about this episode? Um, I know the director or whatever writer they said that they were like they were not aiming for fanfare whatsoever, and you can really tell because there's there's actually like not a lot that happened this episode, and there's not too much to talk about, and there's not like too much Easter egg watch either. It was just kind of like I I can see why they dropped three episodes at once. Yeah. 
That's um, my issue with the, mm. the show. I'm like, you dropped three episodes at once because you knew if you had unveiled that first episode, nobody <laughs> would have come back for the next two. Like, very, very few people. I shouldn't say nobody. But, like, there would have been a lot of people that would have been like, wow, this is, like, violently slow. Like, you had me in the first 10, 15, and then you just, you kind of, like, couldn't figure out what you wanted to do with it. Yeah. But yeah, I feel that. Because they also, we didn't mention this much, but there's a lot of flashbacks to when he was a kid. A um, to to, like, to build up that story of, like, him and his sister and, like, just some of the background about where he came from and probably just, you know, just his backstory in general to build his character. But it kind of interrupts some of the, the flow in the I agree, because the there was parts. a lot of it, too. Yeah. And it's just very... I felt like some of them came out of nowhere. Either It's just like him watching a ship crash or him putting paint on his face. And I'm like, dude, what like, I the Blue's Clues shit can wait. What I gathered from like <laughs> the little flashbacks is that he was like not an adequate warrior, but then there, I guess he was allowed to go on their little expedition to go see the crash ship. But then right. him looking back at his sister leaving her behind, you know, is a sign that he feels guilty and feels like he's responsible for her being missing or her being gone or be her being in whatever lifestyle that she's currently in and she feels guilty that he's responsible for it maybe not like from that specific moment but i feel like that's maybe what's going on with him or it's what's supposed to signify but that's what i get yeah, from it i yeah. i also get the the sense that um he really wants to adventure like he has a sense of like exploration and wants to like be part of something bigger a bit more but he also feels bad about leaving his sister Sounds there's like a lot Anakin you have to Luke. kind of yeah <laughs> there's a lot you kind of have to assume because they're they're all speaking in this other dialect or whatever yeah. that we don't know and they don't translate so mm -hmm. you just have to kind of pick up based on context clues oh yeah they don't translate it yeah no they don't for the they first just... time they've like actually made main characters speak a foreign language and they didn't translate it. And it's like, okay, well, am I supposed to just put two and two together by body language and by facial expression? Yes. That's kind of what it sounds like. Yeah. And yeah. it's like, okay, well that's cool and all, but like you're doing a flashback. Don't do it for that. Do it for main shit. I think, yeah, I think it's, I think it's fine. I don't have an issue with it. I was definitely weirded out at first. I'm, I guess I'm neutral on it for the most part. Like I, they showed a I lot didn't really of it. Like mind said. It. it was confusing at first though, because I was like, they're speaking, but I have subtitles on, and I don't. It just says speaking in language, and I'm like, what? <laughs> What's going on? Why don't? You, <laughs> why don't they translate it? It's. I guess I don't understand. Like, why was it important to not translate it? I yeah, it could have been they could have used dialogue or not used dialogue. I'd be fine with it. They just kind of yeah should have just shot looks at each other and stuff. It'd be like oh, it's a flashback. He just remembers the important shit. Yeah, <clears throat> but yeah, I was fine with it. I thought the their little tribe was weird. They're like living in the jungle. They kind of look kids. like headhunter kind of thing. Yeah, and uh, there's got to be something about that, right? Why is it just kids? Type of thing right there. Yeah. Yeah. Mate, yeah. Lord of the Flies. Peter Pandor. Yeah, a little <laughs> lamplight fallout. Um, what's 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 the plan called? Kanarin or Kanari? Kanari. Kanari. Yeah. Okay. Which but. he mentions that like he, that he was looking for those specific like she's a Kanari or something like that to or the prostitutes. Yeah. yeah, exactly. How would you know? How would you know? <laughs> How would you know right? that they look like any other people? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Like there's no specific like they don't have specific markings or like facial features that would identify them. They just look like any other humanoid type species. I like a slide. I'm like, man, that guy's from straight out of San Francisco. It makes me <laughs> sick. I hate him. He just built different. Where's now. the moose from Frisco? Where's the moose from Frisco? <laughs> That's funny. No, but I, I liked it. I understand a lot of the, a lot of the gripes of like how definitely middle and a little bit towards the end, a little doled out where like, I've seen this all before. Yeah, I think they just could have done better with the... I think my biggest gripe is the, the flashbacks. Um, could have been a little bit better weaved in there because they just they just happen sometimes. You're like, oh, okay, we've totally shifted paces. Like, we're, we're moving to something else entirely <laughs> right now. Okay. <laughs> yeah, but I'm, I'm excited to see more. I can't wait for the next review. Uh, is this also six episodes? 
Do we know? I don't know because we also got fooled with She Hulk because that's yes. actually nine episodes. <laughs> yes, I was very wrong about that. I don't know how many this is. I'd have to look it up, but yeah, I would um, su- assume at least six. Yeah, I, I'm I'm digging it so far. I like it. I don't really expect it to go anywhere. Um, I I can't remember in a trailer. Do we see Saw River in a trailer? Yes. Oh, cool. Well, that'd yeah, be pretty cool. I think so. I like him. I feel like they really uh, wasted that uh, cameo and uh, Rogue. <laughs> yeah, he was barely there. Yeah, he was barely it there. It was a very weird. I don't know. Just inclusion i guess yeah and i feel it's totally unnecessary but um I, i'm excited but uh do you want to give ratings for it you guys sounds good i think i would give a seven because the second half was like so fine yeah no i think seven's reasonable like i'm interested enough there's some complaints but overall I'm generally positive so seven seems pretty reasonable to me i think i was about there as well I have to go a little bit lower than you gentlemen and drop down to a six. Um, I, I have the same agreements. I just feel like they're just... I started to lose interest in the episode. Yeah. That was my biggest issue, and Star Wars is one of those things that I don't want to lose interest in. I want to get yeah. lost in the sauce, whether it's <laughs> Jedi, Sith, bounty hunters, smuggler. It doesn't matter. I just want to get so captivated and immersed in the world. And for one of the... like very scarce times in a show especially a new show i was just like okay wh- wh- where do we go mm. yeah no i think that's fair dude yeah i i really like it it feels like they're they're being careful and the writing is actually going to be good which i have not seen in a star wars show in fucking years so that's something i'm really looking forward to yeah i'm hopeful still i'm hopeful so okay I, 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 yeah, I'm very excited to watch the next couple episodes about it. I'm very excited about it. I hope to see a lot of new planets and shit and more corporation stuff. That stuff really interests me. I'm Andrew's cool. He, he's cool, I guess. Yeah. Yeah. Everything yeah. else, though, ooh, I'm excited. All right. <laughs> but uh, <laughs> thank you guys for watching. Our very first uh, review of Andor. Uh, thanks, everyone, for tuning in. Appreciate all the love that we get on the reviews, you guys. Uh, we'll be back with episode two here shortly. Hopefully you guys enjoy the review series so far. But we'll see you later on the next one. Bye, guys. Peace.